for over a decade since I moved to the Portland area and so it's just uh, being able to join as a member is quite uh, uh, moving it, you know it just kind of feels like a big moment for me to get to be in the show especially with these other three amazing artists uh, so I'm very excited to be here and be uh, able to share my work um, I play with materials um, a lot of my work has a sort of a mixture of organic and geometric content. Um, uh, I use natural materials so you can kind of see that you know, uh, most of these works are, are uh, very muted colors because um, that's just you know, what, what we often find in nature um, for some of these natural materials. So, uh, and they're structural. So they are all kind of helping me work through either just trying to work through um, all kinds of different problems that just kind of get stuck and cycle through in my head and sometimes those are problems of physics and um, you know just how, how are our bodies able to function you know the magic of um, our biological structures and things like that and just physical structures uh, and and sometimes they're they're more social but uh, um, you know, this, this material is felted wool. Uh, it's just raw sheep's wool that's been cleaned and it's just been felted. So it's very intensive, uh, hyper-focused process of just taking a, a special needle and poking at this thousands and thousands of times. It compresses the fibers together. And, uh, and, and this form is an infinity form. It's a Mobius strip. So if you were to trace along one side of this, you actually can just kind of keep tracing it forever because there's really only one side. Uh, there's only one side of this whole sculpture. Uh, so Mobius strips are fun. Lots of people play with Mobius strips. Uh, sort of my interest in this one was uh, playing with this, you know, the concept of infinity and, and timelessness with this um, material that feels very uh, sort of flesh-like, you know, wool is close to the flesh of a sheep, and, and it's just got this organic uh, temporality to it. That, that, that I feel like it just that, that contrast is a really, that's, that's one of those puzzles that my brain is always trying to work through and unspin. This is, um, this, <laughs> I feel like it's kind of funny. Um, this is more of a, a, a social response and the art world response. There, there was a, a couple of years ago, there was a, a highly publicized event of somebody selling a banana duct taped to a wall at an art fair for uh, something like $100,000. And uh, so just, you know, the ridiculousness of it is, it's just, kind of, it's so funny to me. Um, and uh, so this was me trying to sort of process that you know, is that art? How is that art? And, and uh, you know, how do I feel about that? And, and so taking this stone and, and carving a green banana out of it um, I, just kind of makes me laugh. <laughs> and, you know, and that work, which, which went for this astronomical price and, uh, you know, and is gone, you know, within a couple of days versus something that'll, uh, you know, be around for thousands of years. Uh, uh, this especially, so this is carved in granite, uh, so this granite erodes at a rate of one inch every 10,000 years, so this sculpture will probably last at least 5,000 years, and uh, it's, there's, there's, so I, I, I'm attracted to the, these, these very different materials, you know, this, this hard material that will last, you know, almost forever, and uh, you know, versus very soft and and uh, fibrous materials that 
you know, might last a few decades, but, but are much more vulnerable. Um, so just playing with those ideas of time and, uh, and just conceptually, I, I think chains are very interesting because they, they are, they have such opposing, um, uh, things imbued with them because they, they, they are so restrictive and, and, uh, you know, they're, they're terrible to be, you know, to be locked in chains is a horrifying image to us, but, but they're also, it, it also creates a bridge. And, and, you know, when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about sort of our human bodies, how we're kind of anchored to the ground at all times, but also sort of held up by the air uh, in our bodies that lifts us up and we kind of float around. And uh, it's, there's sort of a magic to that that I don't really understand. Um, so, Similarly, uh, this is an attempt to, uh, th this is a process I developed that is, uh, so this is just cotton string, uh, and I, I came up with this process of wrapping the string around itself in such a way that it became structured and uh, rigid and could stand up on its own. Uh, so that was sort of just, you know, how is DNA, you know, this, this, flexible fiber, this microscopic flexible fiber, how does that translate into us, you know, having such solid form and being able to do such amazing things and impact the world around ourselves? Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to be able to share that, that process here. Um, it takes forever. You know, this is, this is about a mile of string and, you know, it's just, wrapping string around itself one, you know, one little loop at a time, uh, takes forever. <laughs> but, uh, so then again, that's sort of this, this time factor where, you know, these very time intensive processes, um, you know, the, whether carving stone or working with these softer materials, it takes a lot of time, but also, you know, some of these will last a long time and some of them won't. Uh, this one, similarly, is another one made out of uh, felt, felted wool. It just has a nice, this is, this is the, the raw material. And it's just uh, lots and lots of processing. This is another sculpture of the cotton string, and this is a... Uh, uh, this one is the sort of round two where I refined my process a little bit. So there's actually considerably more strength in this version than the hanging one that we just saw. Um, so I, I'm excited to do, do more, more with this process, but uh, it, it, it's, it, it takes you know months of uh, you know a couple hours at a time here and there. So and then uh, this is the only brightly colored artwork. <laughs> Brought. Um, and this one is more of a social uh, trying to understand, kind of similar to the banana duct tape to the wall thing. You know, just this phenomenon of uh, blockchain technology and non fungible tokens. Um, so, this is my, you know, these like these children's blocks with NFT and you know, blockchain. And it's a pretty simple translation, but just kind of playing with the language and the words and, and, um, the ridiculousness of that whole phenomenon, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so that is, uh, those are the works from my show, so thank you very much. That's great.